This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is Holly Christine. Hello, hello. Yes, and if you haven't noticed, yes, the audio sounds so much better on my end. Holy shit! Yeah. Oh, and I, and I have to thank my cousin for this, because uh, she went to work for this work-at-home telemarketing company or whatever, and she was out, she was doing the job, she was doing these calls or whatever, but you know how most people will will react to telemarketers, they'll hang up, they won't answer, or what have you. And of course, it was doing bad for business on their end, and she wasn't getting paid a lot, and she's like, you know what, fuck this, I'm working at this high-end restaurant about 30 miles away in the next city, and they tip me pretty damn well. So, I don't need this bullshit. So, she stormed in here like a few hours ago, tossed this headset at me, and she's like, you know what, you know, here, yours. And I plugged it in, I tested it out, I'm like, holy shit. And even as we started this call, Holly noted just, wow. Yeah, you, you said like four words, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, but with, with the good news, there is some bad news as well. Uh, yesterday, as we found out, uh, Casey Kasem, uh, you know, the American Top 40 DJ, everybody knows who he was. He, whether you recognize him from that or recognize him from like Scooby-Doo as the voice of Shaggy. Uh, he passed away, and he was 82. And yeah. uh, I grew, you know, he's he's one of those guys that I know I grew up with him. Listened to him on the radio, mm -hmm. watched Scooby Doo, listening to him do the voice of Shaggy. And I have, I'll be honest, if you had not told me that he was that, that both of those people were one and the same, I would have never known. He was yeah, I don't know if I would have known either. Um, but yeah, it's it's really his radio voice that I remember. And I used to do a Casey Kasem impression, and I, I've, it's been so long that I'm not even going to attempt it because it would be embarrassing. But <laughs> Yeah. And it's, just, it's, just... it's one of the few impressions that I've ever done that was any good. <laughs> uh, I remember as a kid I tried to do uh, Gilbert Gottfried for a while, although I was also why? really – It was Aladdin. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was why. <laughs> oh, but – but yes, yeah, so he passed away, and this is some, another something I I kind of found on Tumblr this morning, and oh my god! At, at first, I did not know what to say. I shared it on my Tumblr, and I didn't have words at the same at the time. But now that I'm going to read it on here, maybe something will come to me. And uh, what I found is um, any individual or group who protests My Little Pony's Brony fan base cease prejudice against Bronies. Number one, what prejudice? I'm not really prejudiced against bronies. Now, now douche bronies, the one, the ones that are their psychopathic man children. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I could be prejudiced against them, but that's because they're. Well, that's not really against bronies, though. That's just against psychopathic man children. Yeah, they just happen to be bronies, and they're, the, and they're also the same guys that are taking the, the styles of, say, myself, Lady Spaz, Linkara. A few other people and running with it and making all of us look bad. Fuckers. Oh, but that that's not even the whole of it. There's this is at an actual petition that was put up, and uh, the petition reads as such: Lately, everyone has been talking about how horrible the Brony fan base is, but this petition is going to put an end to the injustice of that. Whatever propaganda these people that would tear us apart may create, their only motive is that they have encountered something that does not fall into the category of quote-unquote normal. However, as everybody out there knows and can verify, and we all know this to be true, in their world of today, in their world of – wrong form of there, you asshole. There is no such thing as quote-unquote normal. These men and women are lashing out at a perfectly harmless community of people that they do not understand, just as a child cowers underneath his blanket because he fears the dark. Um, no. I'm, I'm going to stop there for a moment. Lashing yeah. out at a community that we don't understand. No, we understand. You're fans of My Little Pony. That's fine. You know, that's, that's perfectly fine. But I have heard 
and seeing some of these bronies say, no, this was made for us, you know, you know, they're basically trying to take the whole thing away from its intended target audience, which is little girls. Yeah, the thing is, it's like, I, you know, if you want to like Little Pony, My Little Pony, that's totally your thing, and, you know, get enjoyment out of that, but um, why does everything have to be about you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, that would be like me, you know, having a big bitch fit because Mega Man is suddenly, uh, you know, suddenly speaking to a whole different different demographic than what it is right now. You know, it would be stupid. It would be childish. And frankly, it would make me look like a total tool. But, you know, ah. but there is more. This is the same oppression that started the Civil War because white men thought themselves superior to black men. In the end, this was proven wrong and resolved, as will the battle over whether bronies are fit for average society. What? Oh. Oh. My God. <laughs> yes, really? First of all, that's, that's not really what started the Civil War. Please read a fucking history book. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, what started the Civil War was, yes, yeah, yeah, slavery was a part of it, but it wasn't all of it. Yeah, what, where slavery was involved was the South did not want to go, you know, be dragged into the 19th century along with everybody else. And so they said, fuck you, we want our states' rights. And, of course, at that point, states' rights meant, yeah, hey, we want to keep those black people working for us. And so they said, fuck you, you know, this, yeah, um, ah, what I'm looking for. Um, um, seceded from the Union, and yes. then and then it ended up blowing up from there. It's a very simplified view of it. It's very simplified. Oh yeah, but but it's more accurate than uh, white people hated black people. It, like, um, you know, I, I think you're looking more towards the civil rights movement and not the Civil War. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just slightly. Just saying. Yeah. Uh in the end, this was proven wrong and resolved, as will the battle over whether Bronin is a ravaged society. Okay, I read that. However, the Civil War did not end without men who believed in equality, and neither will this. Lend your support, and the balance will once again be restored between bronies and the illusion known as, quote-unquote, normality. Okay. Let me, let me put it out this way, okay? If you are a brony, and you are able to walk around and function in normal society without having to spend five minutes talking about My Little Pony every day to random strangers in the dollar store or what have you, you know what? You're, you're, you're fine, okay? I am a big Mega Man fan. You don't see me going out to random strangers on the street and saying, oh, hey, what's your favorite Robot Master? You know, you don't see me doing that. It, it's called having a little bit of self-control. Not everything has to be about My Little Pony. It just doesn't have to, and not necess- and people don't necessarily want to know what you would do with Rainbow Dash in a dark room. We don't want to know this. You can have your fantasies. That's fine. That's fine. Fine. Keep them over there. And if we don't want to see them, we will not look at them. And if As you try- it turns out, anybody who walks around and is like, well, if you have a problem with me, then I have a problem with you, is already the problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, they don't understand that... They're actually causing a problem by being very argumentative, and that's not quite the right word that I'm looking for. Um, and it's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't. Uh, um, <laughs> maybe it's making me crazy. But um, but yeah, when you're when you're overly defensive about something that is a non-issue, mm-hmm. you know that makes you the problem, and not as it turns out, the rest of the world. Yeah, so that that does apply to these particular bronies right here. So, obviously not all bronies, not that I should have to sit there and clarify that because it should be fucking common sense, but you know. You know there's going to be one person who listens to this and not all bronies are like this. No fucking shit. Oh, Now here's the thing. This petition is closed, as, as of the post that I got this from. And it had eight signatures. So apparently only eight bronies cared enough about this <laughs> to sign on this. Thank you, bronies of the world, for not being this douche. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, God. So 
And to, to just leap from that with, with very little segue or whatever, let's get into our shout-outs. Mine, I d- don't have anybody new that I'm looking at right now, other than possibly Pomplamoose, which I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people that have listened to this also listen, have heard of Pomplamoose, especially if you're part of the RDA audience. So I, I've heard them that I can remember for the first time last week. I've probably heard them more and more before. Um and they did a cover of Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go by Wham. And I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Looked it up on YouTube. Holy shit, this is great. Got the tra- soundtrack, got the uh, track off of iTunes. And they have a Patreon as well. And they're doing pretty damn well, might I add. So, um, but it's Pomplamoose, P-O-M-P-L-A-M-O-O-S-E. Again, I'm going by memory. I didn't, I was an idiot and didn't write it down. Uh, there's them. But also uh, Rowan Mithril. I've mentioned him on the show before. He is a Let's Player who does a lot of different things, but he's most known for his Mega Man um, Perfect Run series. And he just started on the uh, Fortress stages for Mega Man 6, which, yeah, good luck with that, buddy. <laughs> Although his first one, it's, it looks rather easy, but yeah, as games go, the further in you get, the harder it's going to be. So yeah, it'll be fun. So, uh, yeah. So do you happen to have any this week, Holly? I have a couple. Um, I have one that was actually supposed to be from a couple weeks ago, and then it turned out we only caught five minutes of our recording. Yeah, that one. Oh, God. <laughs> so um, I'm going to say this one again. Um, this one is yellowjacketguy.com. He does game reviews. And those of you who know me well know that I am not really a review fan. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I, you know, I often find it find that a lot of reviews are more opinion and not really weighing the pros and cons of the game or actually discussing gameplay or movies or whatever it is that you happen to be reviewing. Mm-hmm. I just say games because I, I guess I typically watch those more often because that's something that I'm more interested in if what other people think about it than a movie. Yeah. And I don't really know why that is. And now I'm totally getting off track. <laughs> Anyway, (laughs) Um, so he does a show called Is It Worth Your Cash? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the title speaks for itself. He talks about why a show may or may not be worth the amount of money that it costs you to buy it. Um, And I think it's a really um, great concept for reviews. And I think it really does what a lot of um, new media producers who are reviewers don't typically do in their review. Yeah. Now, now, now you make... that, that it's a more analytical approach to, you know, what's the quality of this yeah. thing. Now you're making me want to go back and actually look at some of the reviews that I've done. And it's like, okay, do I follow this or, 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 or how is mine again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, so yeah. there's that. Um, and then some of you who, if you follow me on social media, you might've seen me post this, um, but this family went on vacation and had a dog sitter. And the dog sitter um, films a um, short little film uh, and called it Dog Story of a Man's Best Friend. Huh. Um, and it is the cutest thing ever. <laughs> so um, I definitely recommend that you check it out. It's hilarious. Um it's it's doing all sorts of things. It's not. I, I I can't even describe it. It's but it's cute and it's funny and you guys should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. It's uh, indescribable. Yeah, I'm. Hang on a second. I'm trying to make sure that if you Google dog story of a man's best friend that you get that. Yeah. Oops. Oh well, Google or YouTube, I would assume, or is it on YouTube? Um, hang on. It is on YouTube. Let me. Yeah. But the way that it's linked in this post, it isn't showing the. Oh, no. Here, let's get. (laughs) Oh, we're going to try this a different way. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, guys. I tried to be a little bit more repair. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, when you search YouTube, search cute whippet dog story, man's best friend. 
There you go. It's by Jaden777. Ooh, sweet. Uh, so, so yeah, that that's something I'll, I, I will definitely check out, and... I know I'm I'm trying to do more of like like a one-on-one hangout with with uh, my girlfriend once a week to give, give us like videos to watch together or what have you. I think <laughs> I'll need to put this in our playlist this time. It's it's pretty funny. Yes, and she is she is a big dog person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so um, I guess unless you've got something else, I guess that's it for our shoutouts this week. Yep. Sweet. So we get our news and. I tried to grab a whole bunch of them because I don't have too much that wouldn't be better suited for constructive deconstruction on backup. So, but this first one I put in here because it it is closer to my heart in a way, and you'll understand why when I start going into it. <clears throat> yeah. Sometimes in legislating, timing is everything. Senator Susan Collins, a Republican from Maine, championed a measure last week to roll back at least temporarily trucking safety regulations intended to prevent highway accidents. Her proposal enjoyed the enthusiastic backing of the trucking industry, but drew sharp criticism from a trucking union, vehicle safety advocates, a group called Parents Against Hired Truckers, and regulators at the Federal Motor Motor Carrier Safety Administration. When Collins' measure was taken up in committee last week, very few noticed. Admittedly, I was also one of them. I didn't know about this until I found this story. Yesterday, however, as NBC News' John Schoen, Schoen? Jane. Jane. Okay, thank you. Explained, it's a topic of considerable conversation now. The New Jersey Turnpike crash involving an allegedly sleep-deprived Walmart truck driver in which comedian Tracy Morgan was injured and his friend killed comes just days after the trucking industry won Senate support to roll back new rules designed to make sure truck drivers got enough rest. Kevin Roper, 35, was expected to appear in a New Jersey court on Monday on charges of vehicular homicide, assault, and reckless driving in connection with the crash that killed one passenger and left Morgan and two others in critical condition. Roper had not slept for more than 24 hours before the accident, according to the complaint. The high-profile crash comes days after a Senate panel approved a proposal to roll back the new rules first proposed in 2010, forcing truck drivers to pull over and log a minimum number of hours for rest. By the way, that minimum number of hours is 10. That, that I can tell you. And it's for good reason. Because this shit should not be happening. Yeah. You know, we are supposed to be the professionals on the road. I don't have a perfect track record, otherwise I would probably still be driving trucks right now. Yes, I have had accidents. My accidents, however, were all minor, and they were not the result of me being sleep-deprived. I will admit that. Maybe it makes me look a little worse, but I can honestly say no, it's not because I was sleep-deprived. It was something else. But when it was time for me to pull off and get sleep, I pulled off and got sleep. Whether I had hours left to work or not, because a lot of the companies, at least the ones that I ran for, they cared more that their product is getting there on at least on time, and if not on time, at least safely. And they teach you how to budget your time to where you can get there safely and quickly. And and I've heard I've even heard people complain about it. It's like, oh man, they're just cutting our hours, we're not getting as much money. You know, yeah, you may not be getting as much money. Because you're having to stop and not being able to take, you know, left West Coast turnarounds or whatever the hell else you're taking to keep yourself awake for 24 hours. But you know what? It's safer for you. Because, yeah, okay, sure, you, we, we pull back all the rules and you can drive 48 hours straight and get a whole shit ton of money because you're driving a whole shit ton of miles. But there's an issue of whether or not you'll be able to enjoy it if you, for some reason, roll over the truck into a ditch or the Grand Canyon or wherever, and you end up a vegetable, and, oh, yeah, you can't use your money. Yeah. And then you won't be able to make more money because you're a fucking vegetable. Or, you know, you're in jail because you accidentally killed someone. Yeah. It's it's just, no, you, this, this is why these regulations were put in place. This is why we need regulation to begin with, because yeah. obviously – now, I cannot speak for other companies than the ones I've worked for, or, or I can speak better about the ones I've worked for, I should say. I guess it's the same thing, but at least the companies that I've worked for, they do enforce the, the whole rules, 
and they prefer you to be safe, you know, prefer you to be safe and and get there safely as opposed to getting there on time. Getting there on time is great. Don't get them wrong. But if you can't get there on time safely, all you need to do is say, "Hey, look, I don't feel I can do this safely. I'm I'm liable to run off the road, either mess up the product or or hit hit a car or something. I need to rest for a little bit." And they'll be like, "Okay, we will do that for you. We will let them know." And you know what? That's how trucking companies should be. All of yeah. them should be that way. So, and and the companies that we actually deliver to, a lot of them that again, a lot of them that I've had experience with, they tend to understand. Yeah. So, as long, as long as you let them know, "Hey, this is what's going on. We're going to get your product to you safely." That sort of thing. That's why it's there. But people apparently are more concerned with money than they are with, you know, being safe, both in body and in product. Uh, and then you have people like this coming up and saying, oh, we want to roll these powers back. We want to push these back. It's like, no, no. Because, again, New Jersey Turnpike, that, that killed the friend of Tracy Morgan here. You, no, we, we're trying yeah. – they're trying to prevent that. That is what they're trying to prevent. We, you know, you're still going to be able to get your money. You may not be getting as much money, but if you're working with a good company, like like the one that I worked for right right before I, you know, came back here, you know, I could pull in on a good week four hundred, five hundred dollars a week take home. That's mm-hmm. pretty decent. So it's it's not like you're going to be cutting off your feet at the ankles or whatever. You're you're going to be okay. And it is doable, as long as you're good with your monetary budget. But that's a whole different story. Uh, it's just, what the fuck? Come on. I don't know. And another what the fuck thing. Because, cause, uh, unless you got something to add to this. <laughs> no, I, I, it's just one of those, I don't understand. Like, who thinks that keeping people safer is a worse idea <laughs> like i you know and i can't simplify it any more than that like why would you ever think that it's a worse idea to keep people safer oh I'll, I'm, I'm willing to bet that their idea is not whether or not oh they don't care about the people on the road i'm sure they do they just care more about money they're, they're yeah they're care and of that's money. disappointing it is <laughs> hmm. you know it's like like those uh people with the oil rigs off of off in the Gulf of, Gulf of Mexico or whatever, you know? Drill, baby, drill. Get all that money and keep all that money. Oh, wait! That's our next story. <sighs> out of Louisiana. Louisiana, out in the bayou. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal has flouted the advice of his own attorney general and scores of legal scholars by signing a bill which blocks a levy board... Levy? Levy. Yeah. A levy board's lawsuit against oil and gas companies who are accused of destroying the state's coast. This bill will help stop frivolous lawsuits and create a more fair and predictable legal environment, and I am proud to sign it into law, Jindal said in a written statement Friday. The law, SB 469, has thwarted a levy district in New Orleans East Bank, the Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority East, or SLFPA-E, from pushing forward with a lawsuit introduced last July against 97 oil and gas companies for damage done to the state's wetlands. According to the suit, the firms exposed New Orleans to catastrophic damage from hurricanes Rita and Katrina by dredging and cutting thousands of miles of pipes and canals through barrier islands and wetlands which, left intact, would have protected the coastal city, the Times-Picayune newspaper reports. We are looking to the industry to fix the part of the problem that they created – the SLFPA Vice President John Barry told the Tri-Weekly last year. We're not asking them to fix everything. We only want them to address the part of the problem that they created. Local Republicans and energy heavyweights, however, viewed the lawsuit as frivolous and illegal because, of course, you know, because we don't want to be held responsible to fix the shit we fucked up. You know, we'll fuck everything up, but, oh, oh, you want us to fix that? Well, fuck you, we have money. You know, you ever heard of the golden rule? Whoever has gold makes the rules, and that's us right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, God damn it. You know, that line from Aladdin, that is not meant to be taken seriously. It isn't. 
you know and hey guess what you fucked up the environment you that's what that's part of the reason that what, that Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita was able to do so much damage to New Orleans is because hey those the integrity of those things was compromised the damage yeah. would have been lessened if they had been left alone or if you had at least built in such a way to where they they could still be useful and functional and there and I'm sure there are ways to do it but obviously again thinking more of the money they just plowed right through it like an elephant in a china shop. Just, uh, it's like, really? And, really? Yeah, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I enjoyed that they called this this lawsuit illegal. Yeah, because, because apparently it's supposed to be illegal to sue big oil companies like these guys. And, oh, wait, wait, wait. Isn't BP still supposed to be cleaning up down there? Mm-hmm, I think so. Yeah, how's that going? I mean, I, I have I have not heard how well that thing is going. I'll be honest, and admit I don't. Ah, fucking people. Ah, <sighs> and and of course the article does state what what a lot of us are probably already thinking. Jindal himself is no stranger to oil and gas money, having received at least $545,000 in industry contributions and probably more, according to the Louisiana Voice. Last year, environmental groups claimed that the figure was nearly twice as high, saying oil and gas companies had donated $1,019,777 to his campaigns between 2003 and 2013. Oh, he's in the pocket of big oil. So they're giving him surprise, money. Surprise, surprise. They're giving him money, so he's going to do what they say. Otherwise, he won't get so much more money anymore. Uh, yeah, let's see. How many How many people told him that this was a, a bad idea to do? Yeah. Um, that's a lot. Uh, scores. Scores of legal scholars. Yeah. And his own attorney general. Yeah. Anything. It's, it's pretty much... I'm calling it at pretty much – let's see. It says – let's see. Uh, 79 law school, school professors had warned the bill could interfere with state and local government claims against BP because you know it was because of their dumbassery that the oil rig blew up and covered most of the coast with like fucking oil and shit. You know? Uh, and it's pretty much – it's, it's – uh, everybody and their grandmother is saying, dude, this is not a good idea. Just you know, you know it's just like your creationism type bills. I think Jindal was one of those that signed a creationism type law and thing into law or something. But oh my god, he's an idiot. Yep. It's like he's not listening to his own people. He's not listening to his lawyers and his attorney general. He's just like, oh, they're giving me money. He probably has his signature on a stamp, and all he does is, oh, this is from Big Oil. <laughs> there you go. Lessons of the work. And it's probably gold-plated, too. Fucker can afford it. Ah. Yeah, they say, poor pe- they say poor people would hoard money. Right. You rich people, stop projecting onto us. Well, I say us, but... <laughs> uh, it's like, motherfuckers. Aye. So do you have much more to add on this or No, no. Yeah. And and by the way, this this one for for uh, full disclosure, this was kind of a late one and I'd heard it on the most recent what the fuck. I'm like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait. What? What? Let me look into this." So I looked into it, found that story and I was like, "Yeah, I got some things to say about this." Uh-huh. Ah. Fuck Bobby Jindal. Fuck him. I- I've seen a picture of him. He he looks a little bit like M. Night Shyamalan's long-lost brother. Hmm. Although I've also been told he looks a little bit like Mati if he'd grown up. <laughs> oh. Okay. So it's like eh, I could see both. Well, I don't know. He's he's not very Captain Planet-y, you know. No. I mean, granted, Mati was heart, but still. Yeah. Was... Well, his heart broke. You'd think that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... uh... Okay. <laughs> yeah. And one more, one more out of, out of this particular section, and one more, at, at least more serious political, as as far as I'm seeing. Um, this one is out of Texas. Hi, Texas. 
As of, as of this as of this recording, last night the Spurs won the whole NBA thing or what have you. Uh, so yay. Uh, Representative Louis Gohmert, Republican of Texas, who needs to change his goddamn name again, motherfucker. On Tuesday, grilled a pastor who supports the separation of church and state, asking him why he did not share the good news, quote unquote, that non Christians were going to hell. Because that's always good news, right? It's like it would be like walking up to a little child and saying, Hey, good news! I'm gonna toss you in front of a car, toss. Not really what the good news means, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know what they're I know what he's saying. I know what the good news is supposed to be. But the way this is worded, it's like, hey, yeah. good news, non-Christians, you're going to hell, unless you convert to our religion. Oy. And then, of course, you have which sect of our religion? You know, Are you going to be a Baptist, a Methodist, a Pentecostal, a Catholic? Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Some of them may not consider Catholic a Christian sect. Same with Mormonism. But that that's, see, that's so many hairs being split there. It's like, oi. Mm. You split so many hairs, you can make a, a vent... You can you can make a baby Wookie out of all the split hairs. <laughs> uh, at a House Judiciary Committee hearing about religious freedom on Tuesday, Gomert told the Reverend Barry Lynn, who serves as the executive director for Americans United for the Separation of Church and State, that the founders of the country and Franklin Roosevelt, that's like my friends in Zoidberg, and often mention religion in their writings. Lynn pointed out that he had received the Medal of Freedom from the Roosevelt Institute for his work supporting the freedom to worship. But that wasn't awarded by Roosevelt himself, Gomert interrupted, before asking if the pastor understood the meaning of being a Christian was to evangelize. No, I, I think the meaning of being a Christian is you believe in Jesus Christ's divinity, that he yeah. came down, you know, God and one and the Holy Spirit and all of that. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to sidetrack a little bit here, but it reminds me of, so my little sister is getting married. Oh. She's marrying a Catholic. Okay. Sweet. He, it is very important for him to get married in the Catholic church. Right. Now we didn't grow up religious, so none of us have ever been baptized. So that meant that she had to be baptized so she could get married in a Catholic church. Right. And we come home after the baptism uh, this was just a couple weeks ago, and um, she opens up a card that was given to her by my aunt and uncle, and inside there's 20 bucks, and she's like, oh, I didn't know they were going to give me something. That's so nice of them. And he was like, her, her fiancé, oh, that's half mine. Oh, and, God. and she's like, uh, why? And he's like, because uh, I was the reason that you were up there. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, um, no, I'm pretty sure that was Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, so yeah, so. But yeah, it, you know, it's people will, you know, and, and I just thought of this because of what you were saying. It's people have this constant misconception about what you know being Christian means and what being religious means, and it turns out it doesn't have a whole lot to do with. Um, what you want or what you think yeah. um, in, in terms of other people. It's like, yeah, okay, there's interpretation involved. But, you know, the whole goal is for you to strive to be Christ-like, hence Christian. Exactly. Oh, so... It's, so it just kills me that this this guy, Gomert, is is saying, oh, well, you know... You, you aren't telling these people they're awful and terrible and, you know, this is a really big problem. You should be evangelizing. Um, no, this, this pastor's actually doing it right. Yeah. Christianity. He's doing it right. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so to continue on, uh, do you believe in sharing the good news that will keep people from going to hell consistent with Christian beliefs, the Texas Republican wondered? Lynn, however, disagreed with the congress congressman's construction of what hell is like or why one gets there. So you do not believe somebody would go to hell if they do not believe in Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, Gomert pressed? The pastor argued that people would not go to hell for believing a set of ideas. Oh boy, and here comes Gomert's shoot back. No, not a set of ideas. Either you believe as a Christian that Jesus is the way, the truth, or life, or you don't. 
and there's nothing wrong in our country with that. That's no crime. There's no shame. Well, of course there's no crime and no shame because we have freedom of religion, you asshole. Yeah. Cong- and, and here's where Lynn explains things. Congressman, what I believe is not necessarily what I think ought to justify the creation of public policy for everybody. <gasps> Shocking. Yes. For the 2,000 different religions that exist in this country, the 25 million non-believers, I have never been offended. I have never been ashamed to share my belief. When I spoke recently at an American atheist conference, it was clear from the very beginning, the first sentence, that I was a Christian minister. So this, again, as you've noted, this guy is doing it right. It's like, yeah, hi. Uh, Yeah, I believe this, but it shouldn't be public policy because not everybody believes the way I do. Yeah, you don't have to believe the way that I do. Right. And Gomert concludes with this. So the Christian belief, as you see it, is whatever you choose to think about Christ, whether or not you believe those words he said that nobody basically goes to heaven except through me. And he, of course, ignores the point about separation of church and state. Because he's a dumbass, and he needs to change his name. Because he's making me look bad. Or at least worse than I already do. (laughs) (coughs) Excuse me. I'm having this horrible cough the past couple of days. Oi. Oh, but, yeah, obviously... Oh, man, I saw this one. This... Uh, I, oh. This cannot be a real thing, can it? Like, I, this name? As far like, as I I've, know. I've known some people with some bad names before, and I can share some stories after we talk about this story. But Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this story. Take a shot. It's from Florida. A Florida woman was arrested in May for shooting a missile into a vehicle. First of all, how the fuck do you get a missile? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, while this already raises some interesting questions, again, like they, like I just said, how the fuck do you get one, and why would you waste it on a car instead of selling it to the Russians? I wouldn't sell it to the Russians. I would just hold on to that shit. But that's just me. What's even more interesting is the woman's name, which appears on her booking record as Methany Crystal. Her, her, her first name is Crystal. Her last name is Methany. That's right. She's Crystal Methany. Crystal Methany. According to this, born in 1977. So I, I don't I don't know if she was named that way from birth or if she changed her name to Crystal Metheny. But it's just what they they don't have much on the actual arrest, and and the the actual reporter who reported the story put up a conversation between them and somebody from the actual department that verified. Yeah, this is yeah, her I, real I did name. Enjoy this. Yeah, and it's like, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> just, just okay. Polk County. I, I kind of want to go to Polk County and meet this person and be like, where the fuck did you get your name? I just, I, I just, just, what the fuck? That is definitely a Florida name. It's gotta be. And I know everybody out there is listening is seeing the, saying the same thing. That's gotta be a Florida name. You're right. Oh God. So you were saying you you had some other names you wanted to share or something like that. Yeah, so I, I worked in um, – well, first of all, my most recent one, if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen this. Um, but I work with people from across the globe. And, um, you know, a lot of these people work in Bangalore. And very commonly, as people well know um, – If you are an Indian person working in an English-speaking job, typically you'll take a Western name just to make it easier for other people. Right. Um, You know, and this isn't just Indians. It happens with, um, you know, East Asians, too. Right. And so I'm I'm getting these messages from Joseph, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then I, I look at his name a little bit closely, a little bit closer. Joseph Stalin. Oh, dear. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joseph Stalin, back to the like, dead, doing business. Right. I don't know if he, like, if they don't, if Stalin is maybe some, has some sort of meaning in India that, you know, is unrelated to Joseph Stalin, or if they just don't know who Joseph Stalin was in India, mm-hmm. which seems sort of weird because they're, like, right there. But <laughs> I was just like, Huh. Yeah. It, All right. 
thanks, Joseph Stalin. I'm glad you liked my work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of, of these parents. I, I don't remember exactly where it was, but they named their kid Adolf Hitler. Oh, man. It's like Adolf Hitler, then whatever their last name is. And they it came to attention when they made news because it was the kid's birthday, and they wanted to get a cake for him. They went to Walmart, and I, I think it was Walmart, and they were like, fuck, no way. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. No, 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 no. We are not doing a cake for Adolf Hitler. Uh-uh, no. I don't care if he's a 10-year-old kid. We're not doing it. I don't I don't remember if he was 10. Yeah. But it's just, no, we're not doing that. Oh, lordy. So, so... But yeah, yeah. Um, I also worked at a temp agency for a long time. Oh. And... Um, you know, there, there were some interesting names that I would come across. There was a woman named Chandelier. <laughs> um, one day a woman walked in and handed me her resume. Mm-hmm. Her name was Minnie Person. Minnie Person. She was, in fact, short. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, wow, that was... Hmm. That's... Well... If, I, I mean, first of all, can... that was just a weird choice by your parents to name you Minnie Person. And I, because I really hope that you didn't take on somebody else's name, you know, get married, take on somebody else's name, and chose Minnie Person as a as a life choice. Yeah, um, that would be kind of weird. But then there was just this lady who was the sweetest lady ever, and you know, in a situation like hers, you have to be the sweetest lady because her name was Delabia. 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 Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah. Very sweet woman, but yeah, her name was Delabia. That's Delabia. Probably the worst name that I've ever come across. Oh god. Just like randomly. Oh oh god, I could just imagine. I'm I'm just imagining like 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 you know, she uh, she's she takes a guy home or whatever and the guy's talking to his buddies the next morning. What'd you do last night? Oh I was fucking Delabia. That that's I know that's horrible. Oh, oh. Yeah, but, that was pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but what else is pretty bad is uh, is 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 this out of Lamarck City, Texas? During a city council meeting, Connie Trube, two-term Lamarck City Council member, made racist comments in a private conversation that were recorded. In the recording, you can hear Trube say, "It's not going to get any better until you get those blacks off the school board." She really turned black. She got on the school board with the rest of the blacks, and they all just ganged up, and that's why the school system has gone to hell. I'm sorry, what? She really turned black. Yeah. I I, I, I don't even understand that comment. I, I don't either. I, I would think that that, that I, you know, other context might be might be some way of, of maybe figuring it out, but I highly doubt it. Uh the recordings went public, leading to an investigation and public outcry demanding Drew d- resign. Despite the push for her resignation from the public, the invest- despite her push for her resignation from the public. That, that's weird sentence structure there. Yeah, it, it took me to have you reading it a second time before I understand I, uh, before I understood what you meant. Yeah, I was, I was like, what? Uh-huh. The investigation is expected to be over by June 30th. At the time of the findings of the investigation, at that time, the investigations will be turned over to the Department of Justice. She has been officially censured from the council, and Trube has remained un- unapologetic throughout the scandal. Well, uh, at least I'll give her points for honesty, I suppose. At a, city, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at a city council meeting, she said, What is on the tape is nothing more than me stating my honest opinion, and I don't back down from that. I never denied what was on the tape. She has made no indication that she will resign over the matter. Well, you may not have a choice because, yeah, there are there are some there are some places where okay, you know what, people don't give a shit what you believe as long as you do your work well, you know, and as long as you're not using those views to represent that certain company or certain people. Right, but here you're making public policy. Mm-hmm. And you've made it clear that um, your opinion of people depends on what color they are. Yeah, we don't want you in, in that position of power representing us and making decisions for our kids. Because I believe it is – well, or at least the city, mm-hmm. I, I assume. I, well, I guess it does encompass kids. Yeah, well. city council. Yeah. 
So it's like, yeah, they don't want you representing them. This is where the people say, no, fuck you. Just, you know, we're going to go on and, and we're going to hopefully get get rid of you, which I hope they do. And you know what? Like I said, only points I'll give her is the fact that she is honest. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey, you know, you know, a lot of a lot of the politicians I've seen, you know, they'll say something and then they get caught in it and then they try and backpedal and, and do all of this and like, oh, no, 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 this, 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 this. It's like, OK, you know, you're at least honest. You, you're a scumbag, but you're still at least you're honest about your scumbaggery. <laughs> I will give you that credit. But that's about it. Oh, this one is out of Australia. Something a little, a little, little lighter. Growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. It seems this 63-year-old took that quote to heart. The unnamed man will face court later this month after allegedly spraying the walls of a police station with graffiti before fleeing on a child's scooter, according to the Chronicle. <laughs> now, okay. Um, don't graffiti stuff, but... Dude, you're kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Police in Kingscliff, New South Wales, Australia, heard a noise from outside the station at 2.20 a.m. local time on Wednesday and went to investigate. The officers were surprised to find large orange lettering daubed across the walls reading Dumb Cops and Kingy Boys Rule. And that's B-O-Y-Z, by the way. 63 years old. Yeah. Now, this is where his awesomeness stops, by the way. Yeah. Um, but just the fact that he did it like he's 63 and he did it on a child's scooter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's, it's, and, and just watch. This goes out usually a day or two after we record this. So, uh, so, if, so if, you see the, if you saw this on uh, What the Fuck is Wrong with You already, then, well, hey, you know what? That happens. I think, you know. Crossover stories tend to happen all the time. Oh. So, uh, let's see. Did, 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 did. They were even more surprised to see the troublemaker, man in his 60s, making his getaway down... Get Yeah, getaway down the street on a child's scooter. According to T- Weed Brian, LAC Crime Commander, Detective Inspector Brendan Cullen, there was a thrilling 300-meter chase... <laughs> <laughs> a thrilling 300-meter chase, followed by a scuffle... <laughs> Seriously, you're chasing a 63-year-old man on a child's scooter. Uh, How thrilling is this chase? I know, right? And it and it was followed by a scuffle that put one officer out of work for a week with a shoulder injury. How bad was the injury? Yeah, I don't know. It must have been bad, though. Oh. The man was promptly arrested for assaulting and resisting police, malicious damage, and possessing housebreaking implements. Housebreaking? Okay. I know what that means, but the way that it's worded makes it sound like he was breaking houses, yeah. not breaking into houses. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it's no. And um, what he did, he he sprayed some graffiti. I don't think that's gonna break a house. It, you'll you'll have to clean it up, but you know it's not gonna break it. Oh. The actions we're alleging are quite irrational, particularly with police being in the building at the time. He said. The man is due to appear in court on June 30th, and police seized his scooter. I like that that's how the article ends. Yes. Police seized his scooter. Well, thank God he got a troublemaker off the streets, people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he took away his child's scooter. He can never get one of those again. No, never, never, <laughs> never, never, never. Oh. And so we, we hop back over here to the States, and we go to Colorado where police are searching for a man who tried to break open an ATM at the campus's Center for Community by pouring acid on the machine. Okay, sir, I just want to let you know that if you pour acid on something and that acid is supposedly going to be strong enough to eat into the machine so you can get the money inside, it is also strong enough to eat the money inside. Yes. (laughs) Just (laughs) thought you might want to consider that for the future. Yeah. Police said that at 2.30 a.m. May 29th, video surveillance shows a man in protective clothing spraying an acidic solution on the ATM, according to a news release. The the suspect is seen returning twice to check the progress of the acid and to try to steal cash from the machine, but was unsuccessful, police said. At one point in the video, the man is seen hiding, possibly because he was startled. Or, well, you know. 
A student who attempted to use the ATM on June 4th suffered chemical burns and called police. The student did not need medical attention. Well, that's that's pretty good. But it was like, dude, you fucking sprayed it with... Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? And, and the machine was damaged beyond repair. Replacement cost is estimated to be about $50,000. And the chemical would cause cosmetic damage, but also caused internal damage that rendered the machine unusable. What were you saying about about it possibly getting to the cash too? <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Way to go, guy. Yeah. So you actually just made it harder for yourself to get cash out of this machine. <laughs> yeah. And of course, he faces charges of criminal mischief and attempted burglary. And it's just wow. Points for creativity. But those are also balanced out with negative points for for your, your execution. Yeah. You know, don't rob an ATM. But if you're going to, number one, spray paint the camera. And number two, don't use acid. Uh, right. Maybe he, he used acid, and that's where he came up with this plan. <laughs> oh. Ah. <laughs> that, that, that would make a lot of sense. Oh, because, hey, man, if this is what's doing to me, oh, oh, hey, I'm going to get money out of this thing. Uh, I'm going to take this and just, like, kind of spray it on there. At least he had the good sense to wear protective gear when he was actually doing it. But but even still, acid on, no, dude, no. And speaking of stupid things people will do, the last story for this week. Oh, Liberty County, Mm. I believe this is out of Texas. A young man learned this weekend that heating up a bullet can have severe consequences to life and limb. The Liberty County Sheriff's Office reports that late Sunday afternoon, they responded to an emergency call from a mother, Rachel Mendoza, who said that her son had found a 22 LR caliber round and decided to experiment with it. The incident occurred at their home off of the county road in Dayton. He had held a cigarette lighter under a 22 caliber round to see what would happen, according to the sheriff's report. The bullet... Did he not understand how guns work? I just... Apparently really... not. The bullet exploded, sending bullet fragments through his left middle finger and lodging in the left eyelid. Mythbusters this fucker ain't. Deputies caught up with Mendoza and her son at a McDonald's location in Dayton while they were en route to a hospital... <laughs> <laughs> You know, you got a hole in your finger and some bullet lodged in your eyelid, but let's get a burger. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck? No, they were they were on their way for treatment. The injury had been deemed li- non-life-threatening, so Mendoza had decided to drive her son to the hospital herself. Right, okay, that's understandable. Yeah. And so it's like... No, no, not so much. It's like, why? I want a milkshake on the way to the hospital. Unless... Unless this this hospital in Humble is a decent drive away from Dayton, then there's no reason for you to stop at a McDonald's. Yeah. And and I don't know the geography there. I do know Texas is big. It has a lot of cities that are spread way out from each other. So it could be possible. Captain Ken DeFore with the Liberty County Sheriff's Office said Monday that he had ha- last heard that the boy did not suffer any vision damage in the accident, but he does hope that he at least learned something. There was a little blood and he will have some scars, but I think he did gain some knowledge, said DeFore, adding that the boy is lucky, lucky to have gotten out of the situation without being blinded. Yes, he is. Yeah, he is. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you uh, hold a bullet and then, you know, light a cigarette lighter under it to see what would happen... You are beyond the point of being able to gain any sort of knowledge about the situation. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see. And, and I'm sitting here thinking, okay, if you want to do something like that, you you have it in a more control, you know, a better controlled environment. You know, it, it would take a little bit for the bullet, obviously, the bullet to heat up to where it would explode, right? So you put it on something. You know, go outside, take one of those like little mini heaters or, or a grill or something. Put a bullet on that if you want to watch it blow up from something other than being fired out of a gun. And you yeah. you, you put it on, you get the hell away from it, and then you watch it go. Boom. There you go. And then the police come to your door and wonder what the hell happened, and you just tell them, science. That's all that happened. And then you could show them, they're like, oh, science happened here. Okay. Nobody was hurt. Just, just don't do it again. Yeah. <sighs> 
But yeah, <laughs> that reminds me of a story I heard a lot of, like years ago, where some guy wanted to uh, you, you know you know lava lamps. Yeah. They'll they'll sometimes like they'll congeal and, and they'll get a little little eh, here and there, and you want to congeal the whole thing back together to where it'll actually move properly when you turn it on and all of that. And one of the ways to do it is you put it on your stove or whatever on a low heat. Key term here, stressing low heat, and it should you know get all the gel to go up to the top, and then it's back to normal, and it's fine. This guy decided, okay, I'm going to do that, but put it on high heat. The thing exploded, and the shards of glass ended up killing him. Oh, my God. I died for a lava lamp is really not what you want on your tombstone. No. And and if and if he was believing in that, and if and if he was one of those guys that believed in heaven, he was probably thinking like right before it hit, like in that like that last moment that supposedly your life is flashing before your eyes. He's probably thinking, oh, oh God, I'm gonna get to this, I'm gonna get to the pearly gates, and somebody's gonna ask me, okay, how'd you die? Uh, lava lamp blew up, and, and took me out. They're gonna be laughing. Ah, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, but so that is our news for this week, and of course. It is now the end of the show. Oh, so we got four minutes. Let's see, let's see how quickly we can get through all, all of our stuff. Where can we find you, Holly? You can find me all over the internet, social media stuff as Gookie Gox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. You can find my Facebook fan page, Holly Christine Brown. And you can find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet. And speaking of Nerdvice, that is one of the places you can find me as well as rtgomer.com. You can find me on the social medias on Twitter at Gomer21XX and on Tumblr at Gomer21XX. And if you like the shows, you want to help support, get better equipment, and all of that really, really good stuff, then head on over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. You can throw in a dollar, five dollars, however much per month, and that will go towards productions and different things. And also, speaking of uh, raising money for things... I have been working on offloading and selling off my manga collection, one, to help pay for like con trips and things like that, as well as giving myself a little bit more room because this manga is taking up space that I could be using for other things. So those are being sold off. I should have a link. When I put this up, I should have a link to what I have left. There's Some of it has already been sold or at least spoken for already. So that'll be – so. There'll be a little bit less than what I initially put if you actually follow me on Tumblr. But it's there. The mangas are like $5 a volume, and I've got plenty to go. So so if you want that, it would help me get to different places like MAGFest and all of that good stuff. And whatever's left, uh, I'll go into the production pod, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, and, and speaking of production pod, um, of course, if you've seen some of the artwork lately for some of my newer videos, uh, you'll notice that the artwork is done by the lovely Becky Hopkins, who can be found on her DeviantArt at beckhop.deviantart.com. And she also happens to have her own Patreon page where you can go and you can get a commission from her anywhere from like a little sketch drawing up to a 30-second animation. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. She is an award-winning animator. And you can find that over at patreon.com slash beckyhop. I highly, highly suggest you go and get some commissions from her. She is great. Oh, so with that, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine, signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an R.T. Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.